Hey, what's up, everyone? It's your boy, Deeg. I'm here for the kickoff of the Beer League Team Fortress Classic Beer League Season 2 Playoffs. I'm coming at you live from my favorite map in the world, Canal Zone. And, uh, yeah, um, coming at you with some Friday Night Fortress. I'm here with today with my friends Doug and Repairman. What's up, guys? Hey, Deeg. Hey, Doug. Good to see you, D. Good to see you repair. It's, uh, everything's going good, Ben. Excellent. Um, so the agenda for tonight is we're just going to talk about the playoffs. We're going to talk about the regular season. We're going to show some clips. We're going to have some fun. In 45 minutes, we're going to also watch and uh, cast the week one matchup between the free agents and Team Hello, which I'm sure will be a riveting uh, contest. Well, Repair, we've Perry. just dropped cool. your video, it looks like. Yeah, let me let me hop back in there real quick. I hit a button on accident. Technical difficulties. Wah, wah. He presses buttons just as good in uh, Twitch streams as he does in Team Fortress Classic. Bunny hopping around his keyboard. Failing to bunny hop around my keyboard, that's right. <laughs> okay. My bad, my bad. All good, all good. Uh, so the first thing we have to talk about is, um, of course, uh, the general format of the playoffs, and we'll go into the, into the challenge. The general format of the playoffs is it's a single elimination bracket. Um, we have 12 teams, so in week one, there are the top four teams get a bye. Everyone else plays each other, and then from then on, it's just a normal single elimination bracket, and the winner gets uh, gets nothing. However, if you do want something for your TFC Troubles... Um, I'm going to hand it over to Repairman to talk about his prediction challenge and uh, how you can win 100 smackaroos. Yeah, so, um, you know, talked with, with Greg and also talked with some of the, the league admins here uh, a couple days ago about putting together some kind of, you know, bracket challenge similar to what you might see with, you know, March Madness or whatever, but with a little bit more of a, a fortress flavor, if you will. Um, so if you are a member of the TBL, uh, discord, if you go into the announcement section, um, you can find a link for the TBL season two playoffs prediction challenge, um, where you're going to go through, we're going to do this week by week. You're going to pick who you think is going to win each match. And then you're going to go through and also pick what you think the score differential is going to be. Are they going to win by one cap or five caps or so on and so forth, uh, to earn extra points. We're going to tally up all the points week after week after week until we get to the finals. And then whoever gets the most points by the very, very end, you're going to get yourself a $100 Steam gift card to buy, I don't know, TF2 hats or whatever people spend it's shame Steam you can't money on these days. Into TFC microtransactions. Right? Yeah. Some premium like animated sprays and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's truly a shame. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, first place is going to get a hundred dollars steam card. Uh, second place is actually going to get a $50 steam gift card. So, you know, we got that going for us too. And, you know, if, uh, we end up by getting any more in terms of donations from people, uh, for, you know, additional prizes, we'll throw in a third and a fourth and so on and so forth. Uh, but right now we definitely have enough for first and second. Uh, we'll, we'll expand upon that as necessary as we get a little bit further here. So cost nothing to join. Just a free, fun thing for people to uh, kind of participate in the playoffs, even, you know, if you're not playing, if you're not rostered, um, or even after you get knocked out, or you are playing. Um, we were talking to, me and Doug were talking a little bit before this, we'll have to see if there's any kind of shenanigans with people uh, shaving or points or throwing games or anything to try and win the, uh, the challenge here. Um, this is reminiscent of the Black, uh, Black Sox scandal. Back <laughs> Who will be the TBL Shoeless Joe Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> There's the a referee reference needs you. to pay off some of the uh, league admins to overturn some matches. <laughs> there you yeah. go. So that, it'd be interesting. Like, um, so so right now the way the scoring works, repair is you get one point if you get the the winner right, and one point you, you get, get the spread right. Right. Ten points if you get the winner right, and then you'll get five points if you get the spread right. So right. basically, consider the the spread part. You know, that'll be that'll be bonus points essentially. Uh, a little bit more difficult to to get those, but yeah, we'll tally that up week after week. Um, I'm hoping to kind of keep tabs on this uh, week after week and then just have 
Um, I won't show you the spreadsheets and everything that I'm, I'm working in, but what I will do is I will share kind of like a scoreboard um, after each week so people can kind of look at it and talk shit to each other about who's really smart and who's really dumb. Do we have any shout out to to any of do we have any shout out to any of the people who are donating? I know that you're a source of funding from this, but yes. So um, I was uh, I was going to be donating. Um, Frizzle has committed uh, a little bit of money. He's pledged some money. Uh, Greg said he was going to throw in a couple bucks. Nuki yeah. also said he was going to. Uh, might be getting something uh, from from Prunes as well. Uh, so far, those are the people that have committed, but that might change too. Um, just the the first week, like I said, we might get some more people that that throw in a couple bucks here or there. Whenever you so, do, yeah, thank you to everybody. Yeah, big ups to those folks. And whatever you do, don't accept money from bad luck because we know how that will go. Yeah. And for those we who don't do. or aren't in on the joke, uh, bad luck are nefarious for uh, uh, notorious for returning purchases. Um, so the money, I'm sure, would not stay with us if it was donated. I couldn't tell you the last game that bad luck bought on Steam that he did not get a refund on within like 24 hours. It's insane. He's got like a streak of seven or eight games going now here. A man with refined tastes. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing is good enough for his standard, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, definitely hit that up. Um, The link is in the Twitch chat, exclamation point challenge. If you forgot it, that'll get spammed. Um, I think that repair, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a cutoff for the week one submissions, right? Yes, we're actually going to be turning off the form at 10.30 tonight uh, when the first match starts. So no cheating. you got to get them in before the first match. Yep, get them in. Um, otherwise, you lose out on uh, potentially 15 points. So, um, and yeah, I think we'll be, just before we switch over to match cast mode, I think we'll be going over some of the community sentiments and seeing where uh, where the votes are landing. Right, Repair? Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, we'll do that. We can take a look. I've got everything set up with the most recent submissions. Um, for those of you that are curious how many people we have, we've got about 34 uh, as of last tally uh, a few minutes ago. So we've got 34 people participating. Excellent. Good. Yeah, the the bracket is kind of like what the NHL did in a play-in. So you got six people, teams playing, and then you got six sitting on the side. Uh, so this is kind of a fun thing for those six teams that are not playing this week to to be able to take on. Uh, definitely, definitely. And those six teams that are sitting are not disappointed that they're missing out on Prodigal. So I can I can attest to that. I think everyone here speaking right now is is missing Prodigal and not 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 mining it too much. I wouldn't say we're missing it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay, well, uh, so definitely check out out that form. Let's launch into the next uh, kind of phase here. Um, what I want to do next, gentlemen, is talk um, about the season two. Like, we're eight weeks down. We just had eight weeks of TFC. I feel like compared to season one, it kind of flew by. Um, and uh, whereas season one was kind of full of, like, anticipation, excitement, like, I remember getting together a few nights a week, and we were just just relearning the map and laughing about how seriously we were taking it. And season two, like, I feel like things have totally flipped. How have y'all season two experiences been so far, been this, this uh, last couple of months? Uh, very, very similarly to what you just kind of described, um, where I feel like, you know, we've, we've had halfway decent attendance with, with fall play. We haven't had the best attendance, but we've had halfway decent attendance. Um, it's been a lot of, you know, 11th hour oh my god who's actually going to be our fourth and fifth person that shows up and then inevitably someone does show up at the very last second um doesn't know the map jump into the game okay whatever um so it's been a little bit more uh people have been a little bit more blase about you know their their attitudes towards it and attendance and in general which honestly uh with how old the game is with you know the purpose of the beer league uh, i think that's perfectly fine and I think it's it's resulted in some some pretty fun games. Uh, I think it's in, resulted in a lot of entertaining games. I think across the board as a whole, um, comparing season one to season two, the games have been much closer, uh, yeah. largely because of the kind of mixed roster format, which I think has been a really really great addition. Uh, I think it's I think it's done a lot to kind of remove the sweat from the beer league, uh, which I think was was kind of needed. 
Uh, but it's been a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed it week after week. Um, yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed the new format. I'm looking forward to what kind of wrinkles the uh, the moderators and the admins have in store for us for, for next season, assuming there is a next season. Me too. I really enjoyed this format too, and I didn't, I didn't expect to. I thought it was going to be annoying to have to coordinate between four teams. So for posterity's purpose, I'll just kind of briefly explain. Um, season one uh, was 6v6 for most of the season, 5v5 for some of it, but it's one team versus one team. Very straightforward. Uh, team-based objectives, and the winner gets to uh, very easy to, to understand um, when you look at a matchup, one team versus one team, who could win. And so we had a lot of, um, I, I think, fairly easy to predict the outcome of many matches in season one and kind of reduce the fun a little bit. Season two, the format shifted to uh, one where each week a team is getting randomly paired with another team and you have to combine into a two-headed ogre, two-headed giant, and face off another, I guess, another two-headed giant, which kind of reduces the um uh, kind of functions to even out the skill disparity between the teams and uh give us more close matches on on balance um i've had fun with it it's also been fun kind of getting a chance to play with people who aren't on your team week to week and have that variety uh doug did you have anything to do with that change or i know that you uh, got added as an admin this season right I've been added as an admin, but this has been a hundred percent Nuki's brainchild. Uh -huh. uh, it was on, it was in motion before I got added into a, an admin, and uh, I gotta, you know, agree with the sentiment. I mean, the first season was a punching bag for a lot of teams, uh, whether that came from us or it came from a, a number of the other teams that had a number of really talented players on it. And the people just coming back got beat up a little bit. You saw OST's record in the first season. They didn't win a game. And then they come back and they start mingling and meshing with other teams. Plus their skill on ADL maps mm -hmm. uh, really allowed for them to be, I think they came second in the league for points. So you've got a, yeah. uh, you know, a, a worst to first um type scenario of the balance and you take a look at stack season one we didn't even come close to losing a match and then we're, we're pretty much 50 percent on the year like so the mingling of the teams well, that, that also had something to do with our attendance record we only had three people generally showing up to each matches mm -hmm. so, here come the excuses <laughs> yeah it's our, our excuses for sure um, but yeah, I mean, we really enjoyed meeting a lot of the community that way, as opposed to being hermited in our own shell of the in-house players that we always play with. And, uh, we got to, to branch out, met some people that we've been in the same community for years and probably haven't talked to. So it was, it was good. Learned of talent that are now populating some of the more skilled pickups. So, uh, it was, it's been really successful in my opinion. Yeah. yeah it's been so good. Really quickly, Greg, before you move yeah, on, yeah, I just yeah. want to introduce the stream to this is Herbie. This is the cat that we just got. If I look distracted at all uh, during the pregame, it's because he's clawing at my leg and it hurts. <laughs> oh, kitten claws. Those, there's those kitten are brutal. claws. Yes. So we just got him a few hours ago. That's right, Prune's kitty. That's, no. that's Herbie. Hope, hope you don't have any leather furniture because that's gone. <laughs> Yeah. No leather furniture, thankfully. But yeah, if I look away really quickly, it's because I'm getting stabbed. So I apologize in advance. Apologies not accepted. Pay attention. <laughs> so just one other thing I, I want to kind of pick up on where, where Doug had mentioned, you know, he had talked about OST and um, their their turnaround from season one to season two. Um, and not just, you know, the mixed roster format, but also, you know, introducing new maps. Um, you know, we while season one was all kind of traditional CTF, maybe I think there was one reverse CTF that was in there. Mm -hmm. uh, this season we had two ADL maps. We had run, which is, I don't even know what you would consider run. It's kind of a reverse CTF, I guess. Um, and then we also had Canal Zone 2, a CP map. So we had a lot more variety in terms of maps and map objectives, which I think also uh, kind of kept things fresh. Um, CTF is, is great, you know, it's basically what Team Fortress Classic was built on, but it's nice to mix it up a little bit, especially when, you know, there's so many different maps to choose from. 
Yeah, and even the the classic CTF maps we played, we didn't really play any of the classics. We had on uh, sorry, Enclave's reverse. Uh, we had Darkness, Vidars, Mulch Trench. Yeah, I guess that's is that it. Yeah, it was eight weeks, right? Okay. Yeah, it says Enclave was reverse, run is run, and they made K-Sour, CMHF for for ADL type and CZ2. It was a good mix. It was a very good mix. Those were, those were fun maps. Um, I think the only, well, for me personally, the only miss is run, or not run, darkness. Darkness is the, the big miss. I hate that map. But I know some people also really like it, so... Mm -hmm. I might, but be, it's I might be alone the, in that opinion. It's an updated version of Darkness, which did play a little bit better than yes. the original. I agree, I agree. You had base differentials on the last one that were just a nightmare. And the blue base, or dark base, whatever you wanted to call it, you couldn't even mm -hmm. grab the flag. It was mm. just horrible. <laughs> I love that about the, the, the TFC community we're now in. A lot of people are just taking it upon themselves to take maps that they like that didn't get a lot of play and be like, screw it, we're playing this. I'm going to update it. I'm going to make this thing happen. It's pretty cool. Well, there, there have been tweaks on maps that are even popular. Like, Neon's done a really good job of revamping Raiden and yeah. making it better and better, and he's actually in the middle of a potential rebuild on it right now. So, yeah. I mean, there's, there's uh, you know, tweaks that can be made on certain maps too, and a lot of them it's about taking the grenades out, because yeah. the new players are, you know, you give them four grenades and they can kill themselves and have four more grenades. It makes it for a very, very miserable time for the offense. Also could create some very degenerate defensive strategies. Yeah, I think we spam. saw that on um, op spam. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was the, the season one map with the, the two. Coast L. Sorry. Coast L was one of them that had yes. a respawn where you could just back into it and get full Mervs. That's the one. And, and, and you can just toss it into the directly into the ramp room from yep. From the spawn room. Spawn. I think when we played that, we 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 ended up going a two engineer strategy where they were just tossing imps. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, you got to use the tools to win, I guess. But uh, yeah, it, it's always good to cut down on the grenades in, in TFC. I I don't know if I've ever ever seen a map that wasn't improved by it. So favorite map? What was y'all's favorite map of the season? Oh, I love run. I'd play run all day, every day. It's, really? Yeah, it's by far my favorite on the list of the ones that we played. Seeing a vote for Vidars in the chat. What do y'all think, chat? Favorite map? I know yours repair. It's the same as mine. What do you yeah. have? CZ2. Yeah, CZ2 is a, a favorite of mine as well, but I like scout running, and it's probably the most boring highlight clips you can possibly get is a scout capping over and over again and killing himself yeah so. it's kind of it's kind of backwards right there's there's probably more going on in a game of cz2 than there is most maps but nonetheless you know watching highlights from it they're, they're not particularly exciting it's no. a lot of very slow walking even, even an all cap it's a scout bunny hopping on a floor generally or yeah. hitting a conk to the it's not it's not exciting uh, no. but it's fun to play it's very <laughs> it is very fun to play um, yeah, CZ2, and I'll also throw a vote out there um, for, for K-Sour. As someone that didn't play a ton of, of ADL, I only played probably half a dozen matches, if that. Um, K-Sour is one I never got the benefit of playing, and I know just over the years that that was a lot of people's favorite, not just favorite ADL map, but favorite map, period. So that was my first experience getting to to play that. Um and uh, was was very very enjoyable, even in a, a game that that we lost uh, against OST. Um, was a really really fun game. Yeah, yeah. I like that from the sidelines on that one. Um, and all three of you guys have participated in the casting squad this season. Um, mm -hmm. Doug, you're another caster. Repair, you've been co-casting with me a bunch. I know you've also worked with Jan Jan a bit. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> How do you guys feel the uh, experience of casting these matches has changed season to season? Well, I think there's a big delta between casting a 6v6 and a 9v9. There's a lot more going on, and mm -hmm. uh, it, it virtually it demands a co-caster, I would say, uh, which does put a little bit more color on what's going on. Even when, um, I think Jan Jan made a comment one time when he did a cast by himself that it was really difficult to do. Yeah. 
uh, solo. And he was, you know, really happy to get someone else in on, on the other casts moving forward. So it does make add a, um, a layer of color. And um, I think a lot of the casters have put a lot of time into uh, graphical upgrades and things like that that have come a long way. Not me, but, you know, the professional ones anyway. Um, so, yeah. It's, Your setup it's is classic, good. Doug. It's classic. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's it's enjoyable. I think, um, I don't know, it, it gets a little bit of attention to the game. You get 30 people watching TFC. It's, it's awesome. I think it's great. It's a great time. Yeah, we have, you repair. We have, we have 17 idiots watching a pregame show for a TFC <laughs> match in 2020 right now. This is the week, man. What are you talking about? I know, about? right? I'm, I know. I'm sorry. Ain't um, no place I, better. I didn't do any. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, hello. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't do any casting in, in season one. Uh, I was just kind of helping out with the the Twitch moderation and, and everything like that for, for you, Greg. Uh, so this has yeah. been very, very different for me. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, I didn't really see myself doing it. And if I did do it, I didn't really think I would enjoy it. Uh, but no, it's been it's been a lot of fun. I think you, you maybe think about the game a little bit differently. Um, and uh, yeah, just just spectating the game, seeing what other people do, seeing you know what their their plans are, um, the the nice plays, um, all that good stuff. It's it's a lot of fun to watch. Um, and when you're actually, you know, I, I'm sure two both of you have had this experience as well. When you're seeing someone else cast, and you're seeing the way that they're like working the camera and the people that they're following. You're kind of like, wow, like you idiot, why don't you follow this person or why are you moving the camera that way? So now I get to control it. So that's also cool too. I don't know that I do it. Yeah, but any better than anybody else. I, I think everyone probably thinks the exact same thing, regardless of who's casting, but it's still fun to be able to control it. Well, it is to a point, like you'll notice that somebody is just constantly moving the camera. And at that point, it's like, it's really hard. It's like a Blair Witch show going on. And you get a little barfy. Kind of, yeah. You, you mentally tell yourself, okay, I'm not going to do that when I'm, when I'm casting or whatever. So you pick up on tips of <laughs> not only what to do, but what not to do. Yeah. Um, but Yeah. Yeah, it's been fun watching the caster's arms race. Uh, I like that we're definitely starting to see some differentiation, I think, in terms of style and approach, um, which I like a lot. I just love the community aspect of it. Um, I'm also seeing another great point by Bacon Man, which I totally, totally resonate with, which is stealing strats. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just being able to see another team play and see, see where they fuck up playing TFC and then having our match the next day, it's perfect for me. Perfect learning experience yeah i went into most trench week for example feeling very confident you know <laughs> what two ng strat dominating over multiple soldiers or yeah yeah oh we knew that already we were we were planning on the two ng strat from the from the get so. i think a lot of it too is for these unfamiliar maps or for me just that i don't play a lot of tfc during the week it's just getting familiar again with the way that the maps are laid out um and seeing the routes people take, like offensive routing. I never played offense back in the day, but that seems to be most of what I do in 2020 for whatever reason. Um, I don't know. I find it useful. But yeah, there's that. And um, just the general community interaction. It's a small group of people. Um, I think it's... So a, a, a TFC match has 18 people playing it. Um, tonight will be eight because it's 4v4. It's a, a cut-down format to be a little more competitive. But during the regular season, we had, um, you know, 18 people playing at a time, 19 people, uh, or nine, 16 or 18, depending on the you know, 8v or 9v. The caster is in there, and then as many people, again, watching from the bleachers, essentially. And TFC is, with its, with its flag focus, is surprisingly spectatable. And if you if you can really find a way to leverage multiple points of view or at least multiple casters like just vocalizing what's happening on each side of the base, on each side of the map, um, I don't know. I think it's just a super good to watch, super good and interesting to watch. But I'm completely biased. Well, this this was my argument that you know four v four is a little bit easier to follow because there's only one flag movement and it is easier to cast uh, because you're only just focusing on one side of the map. Um, yeah, but to your to your other point though, they're like in this four v four format, teams can completely swap out all four players for O and D. You could still have eight people per team playing. It's right. perfectly within the rules of being able to do it. Yeah, that's an interesting point. You have your strong O roster and your strong D roster. I imagine we'll see 
I mean, during I think we'll probably end up seeing more in the playoffs like we saw during the regular season, which is people just scrambling for players. But um, sure. I'm sure there'll be a few teams out there that are have the luxury of min-maxing that way. Given, given the option, you'd want to have like a bat on offense, but not a bat on defense. So, I mean, that's that's ideal, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. Well, um, the only other thought I can think of for my part on look, looking back at the season and being a player is got has just got to do with how much how surprised I was by the TFC community coming together and willing to play together without drama. Um, maybe I missed it, but I didn't really see any big problems with any with the combination of any two teams. Uh, there was one combo that did not get along whatsoever. I don't okay. need to drill down on who it was or when it happened, but uh, yeah, somebody to, in. It, Somebody in chat just called it out anyway. Uh, they oh, interesting. Were... How did I miss that? Yeah, there was a bit of words spoken back and forth. So, <laughs> but it's not the only one. <laughs> I got to get the DL on that. I got to find that that stream. We need a uh, TFC like Jerry Springer show or something like that. <laughs> we can. I think that, that Natter's, going, Natter's yeah. going top rope over top of Bacon Man. Like how would that? <laughs> yes. How would that work? Yes. That's exactly what I was thinking. So yeah, that'll be good. But yeah, other than that standout example, um, it's been fun watching everyone come together. Um, and uh, it is nice, too, feeling like there's a little bit of flexibility in terms of rostering because a lot of times if one team doesn't have enough, their team can kind of flex and bring in more. Um, I don't know. Like it, It's a much more like pickup uh, kind of style of TFC, which moment to moment is a little more can feel a little bit more comfortable, I think. It's, it's, a, it's a little less rigid. There's a little less organization on the like ahead of time it needs to happen. Like You don't need to have a, a roster of 20 players like you would in, in the old days. So, Yeah, like I said, we showed up with three people and hoped the other team would have six a lot of the time. It, yeah. It yeah. worked. Okay. Well, um, we have some clips we want to show from the season, and we'll get it before it gets too late. Um, so... Any other thoughts on the season before we do that, folks? Gents? No, I think it. I think it's been really successful. I'm really glad to see that the finals are down to one team. Uh, it does allow the the more competitive side to come out for the last few weeks, um, and we'll see if there's any of these rivalry matches that are happening are kind of interesting. Uh, that uh, you're going to highlight some of the odds or the how the community thinks they're going to go, but there's a really interesting that we're going to lose, uh, you know, a bunch of teams uh, uh, off the first round. So, you know, we're going to pair yeah. this one right away. You know away. what? Why don't we go right into that and talk about that? Because actually, we only have about 20 minutes till match time, and I want to make sure we get it. We, 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 we really talk about the playoff predictions here. Um, we were planning to do a clip show first, but, um, you know, time and space and all that. So I'm going to pull up the bracket, and we'll get into it. Uh here it is. Okay. The bracket should be appearing on your screen. And you can see what we're looking at here. So as I'm going into this, you see the, the spam going on in the Twitch chat. If you haven't yet, go fill out your bracket for your week one predictions. At the end of week four, at the end of the grand finals, um, person who's had the best predictions is going to get a hundred dollar gift card so yeah get on that shit we have four teams with buys to start to start off um we have faultless stack foul play and ost um the top four teams uh and then everyone else is playing each other what do you guys think about this round we got to break it down in individually or your repair go ahead riff. i was just gonna say we got we got a we got a couple um interesting matchups here so in particular two that i'm well yeah two that i'm looking forward to we've got thanks and covid19 and then we've got tns and auto um i think the the other two matchups you got the free agents versus hello and always versus nwo um i think most people kind of 
expect those games to go to go one way. Uh, I think most people are favoring Hello very, very heavily. I think that's probably, um, at least perception-wise, the most one-sided uh, match of the, the entire round. Um, and then on the other side, you've got uh, TNS and Auto. Um, TNS made it to the finals last year. Um, yeah. And they've got Auto. And I feel like Auto has really come on stronger um, as the the season has gone on. I think, you know, they've been fielding a really, really good roster. Um, that, that's, a, that's an interesting matchup to me. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how that's how that's going to go, those two. Shout um, out, I'm casting that one. Shout out. Shout out, Doug. Yeah. Twitch.tv slash Doug TCK. That's exactly right. I was actually going to pull that up. Um, so, yeah. Um, tonight we have the Free Agents versus Hello. Tomorrow night we have on Coach Suze's stream, Thanks Be COVID. That'll be a good one. And then on Sunday, we have um, two matches going on uh, side by side. TNS, Auto and Always VNVO, NWO. And that'll be you, Doug, as well as Neon. Do a little bit of dueling TFC banjos. Yeah, I think my thoughts align yeah. with y'all's. I expect to see two close games and two not close games this round. Yeah. yeah so okay. one other thing. Uh, sorry, I'll let you take the, the mic here in a second, Doug. But one other thing I was going to bring up, um, always versus NWO, I think a lot of people are expecting always to to probably run away with that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all things, you know, being equal in a vacuum, I think that's probably the case. There is always the troll factor when it comes to always, whether it's True. Nick, you know, stabbing his own defense uh, or, you know, doing whatever weird things that, that Nick does or, you know, <laughs> Heat and Nuki having team kill contests uh, on their, their teams. You don't know. You have no idea how it's gonna how it's gonna shake out. So I expect always to win that pretty pretty clearly, but we'll we'll see if they don't they don't pull some some shenanigans here. Yes, the troll factor. Well I was gonna say, I mean, losing in the first round one of TNS or auto is it's really big for the the bracket. I mean, those are two teams that could hypothetically be challenging for, you know, a number two spot like TNS did last year. I mean, there's there's a lot of talent that's going to be leaving in this first week, essentially. Yeah, I think we've seen the strength of the unorthodox approach, especially on these unorthodox maps, like, like the one we have tonight, Prodigal. Um. And I, I also have a, like this feeling, and maybe this is just just me like flattering myself. Like, I like to think of the folks, uh, the the in houseers of Stack Fame and of Always Fame, and to some extent Hello, and see those those teams as being you know um, fairly well grooved in on on the in house meta maps. But then when something like Prodigal comes along, I kind of feel like us old school guys can kind of shine a little bit. Um, I don't you know, think anybody shines on Prodigal. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, we can't three, polish a turd, Greg. People we, who know how to bunny hop through the yard shine because you have to do that for 15 <laughs> straight minutes. So not repair a man. Uh, in the semifinals, though, we have the pleasure of another very unorthodox map of Throw Flag, which is which I had the chance, the pleasure of previewing on your stream last week. Repair. That's a weird one. Yeah, it got it got league play back in like oh five oh six. It was, um, you know. Not my favorite map again, but it was uh it did get a bit of bit of play. So so okay. Let's do some predictions, guys. Uh this weekend, let's uh the three of us will pick some winners and then we'll 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 bring up the uh community results. Does that work for you, Repair? Or is it too early to show those? Uh I think it's probably a little bit too early. I think maybe let's walk through some of ours. Uh I've got a couple clips in particular if we want to kill, you know one or two minutes, the highlights from the, the season, if you will. Um, we can we can do that for maybe a minute or two. And then right before the, the cutoff, we can we can show the actual. Uh, OK. So, OK, yep, that sounds good. Um, before you okay. get there, you guys want to just tell me what your your personal overall playoff bracket winners and losers looks like. Who do you expect to get far? Who do you expect to, to dip out early? What are we thinking? What's your narrative? 
well, I mean, I've got personal biases. I know who might we all we could really tell is who's going to get through the first round and then the matchups into the second round. Then it starts to get a little bit muddier. Um, but it it really depends on who shows up for a lot of teams. Right. I mean, we've got some people who are uh, not playing as much as they were originally. So very yeah. diplomatic, yeah. Doug. Rosters, uh, I, I think, definitely have something to do with it. I think we've seen it throughout most of this that, you know, a lot of weeks, um, if not every week, you know, teams are not playing their, their best four or five players. Um, and so that can that can throw a wrench into what should be, a, you know, a pretty clear and, and one-sided matchup. Um, so... All these excuses flying. I know, right? I'm not. I'm not saying that for us. I think we're going to win. Two teams. Personally, leaders. I think. I as think as, foul play will win. As long easily. as I play, we'll be fine. This is what That's history right. has shown. Foul That's play is guys... undefeated when I'm on the field. Did you know that, Doug? I did not know that. Oh. And we've not won did a single strategic... game that I've missed. <laughs> did you strategically miss the hard games? Is that what's going on? One, I actually intended to be there for Case Sour, but I had something come up. The other one, I can't remember the other one was, but uh, Enclave, Enclave, bit of bit of fun TFC trivia for you. Okay, so I'm excited to see the Hello Stack matchup that I feel is fairly inevitable in the quarterfinals. I think that'll be very good to watch. I'm excited to see uh, foul play. You're in my team repair, scoring off against either TNS or Auto. I think that'll be a very fun match either way. I think so too. Um, and and then um, I think in the in the semifinals in the low in the lower side of the bracket we can expect to see probably always against the winner of foul play at TNS and auto that'll be solid and interesting. And in the upper bracket I expect it to be characterized by stack the winner of stack or hello, which is it's, it's easy to favor stack there. But again, to your all's very diplomatic points about rosters. And we've also seen pretty strong performances come through this this season from the from Faultless, uh, the boys with the uh, the game breaking uh, tag. So um, yep. like, they could be they can make it pretty far. And uh, yeah, I think they've been. The way, uh, I think I think they've been a little bit of a sleeper team. I think a lot of people maybe have have looked past them, uh, and they've they've played very very well since the the first week. The only loss that they have is actually paired with with us foul play against. Uh, Stack and OST week one. So, our bad. Sorry, yeah. guys. <laughs> Sorry, folks. All right. Well, stack, stack is down to five active players, essentially. So, you just have to, you know, see who shows up. Man, Doug getting in those excuses thick. All right. <laughs> so, how much time do we want before we, we show off the, the results? I would say if we could give it about five minutes. Okay, we'll do push a, it right about at the a five game minute time. cutoff. Yeah, and so then yeah, we have way more than five minutes worth of clips. Are there any particular ones you want to start with? So the ones in particular uh, that I thought, you know, I, I think there's probably two or three here that that are best. Um, I would say you could do week five. Well, we could start off with a, a little bit of of levity here. Vidars, okay, dialing it up. This is from LB's stream. Yes, I believe so. Okay. Cropping's going to be a little weird on this. But I am hitting play now. And the quality is what it is. Like if it ends two now, red wins. Yeah. So. But I mean, they're not going to hold this for two and a half minutes. So. This is a close I game. That now. This is our game. I do say this that. This is our game, game yes. That. Do you have is audio on this, beating Doug? Doug? No. No. I didn't. We had a buy. Oh my God! No, we we beat you, Doug. Yeah. I wasn't here for that. Okay. 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 Another cap. So there's no audio for this one, but this is um this is Eda pulling out a cap with uh, a minute or two left for for stack and NWO and having absolutely no idea where to take it. <laughs> and getting lost in his base. Oh my God. Yeah. Can you only hear yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, there's no audio coming through. Oh, oh, one. actually, I do hear it. I do hear it. It's on the yeah. screen. Yeah. And then he died. Oh, no. Oh. What a blunder. Yes. <laughs> Keep it in now. Red wins, yeah. so. 
But I mean, they're not gonna hold this. Can y'all hear it on the stream? Yeah. yeah you, oh, they can hear it. Okay. Okay, that's my bad. I forgot I had your your stream oh. muted. My my apologies there. Yeah. Uh, Edub with the with uh, as LB put it, quite the blunder. Um, in a very pivotal moment uh, in that match, just running around the base <laughs> blindly uh, to. To find Can you the capture repair? point. Where is the cap point on Vidars 2? It is underneath the flag in the flag room. There it is. So, yeah. Uh, next one, I would say week two, CMHF. Okay. Oh, oh this flag catch. The catch. Oh, oh, oh holy yes. ridiculous air and cap. Psycho death oh with the follow-up! So you're only showing matches where Stack loses. <laughs> you're perceiving a trend, huh, Doug? I swear that's a coincidence. I promise that that's oh, a yeah. coincidence. Oh, yeah. So yeah, honestly, Psycho probably the, the play of this season. Um, that was a just ridiculous catch. Hang on. Totally go nuts. It's gonna go slow-mo time. Quarter speed. Oh, gotta back up even further. It was so fast. <laughs> oh. what the fly? And then the yeah, backwards the air strafe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Nice step by Weedy. Oh, great. Great. Oh. Clear explosions. Yes. Yeah, that was quite a quite. <laughs> Could that have possibly been planned? There's no way, right? No, the flag catch was definitely you not him, planned. He planned it for sure. Yeah, <laughs> it's unreal. All right, I think we got time for like maybe one more. Yeah, well, we'll do. I was gonna say we could do one more funny one here. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, under oh, how about the zero mulch? gravity on trench. That one. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, oh, yeah, it God. should be angel. the angel. <laughs> yeah, should be this one that I got highlighted there, Greg. This features yours truly. I'm playing soldier in this clip. Let's hit it up. <laughs> Hold on, I saw a quarter speed turned on. Okay. Here we go. And now, oh, fancy spot here by Deke. Okay. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm pretty sure has Archon. in this clip, gravity wasn't just reduced, it was reversed. Because when I respawn, yeah, I went I'm not straight sure. to the ceiling. Yep. And now, oh, fancy spot here by Deke. Okay. What? <laughs> Your head's... <laughs> oh. His head's pinned to the roof. Uh, yeah, there's... There's a couple things in there that aren't super apparent when you watch it. So number one, Genorti's calling yeah, it out in the uh, in the, the chat there. there. You know, he was on comms asking. You know, he was building a gun by the respawn while this is happening. Why is my gun floating to the ceiling? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one other thing, you'll notice the debt pack that that goes off there. So the debt pack is is significant in two ways. So number one. Uh, debt packs are very much similar to grenades in that if they kind of penetrate through a floor, um, they can kill things much like a, a regular grenade does. And uh, yeah, Angel, when he sets that debt pack off, he actually blows up half the team with it because they're all stuck to the ceiling and he's got it bugged up in the, up in there. Uh, and then secondly... So the debt pack is also significant because that is what caused the uh, the Archon slip up. Angel had a bind for reducing gravity uh, on his demo config for something, probably for cheating in a uh, you know a, a skills jump map or something like yeah, that. Likely. So he's trying to set his debt pack, and he fat fingers hits the wrong button and screws up the gravity, and he had no idea that he did it. So. Um, we got we got quite the uh, the laugh. Thankfully, it wasn't a super close game in which that had uh, any sort of real impact on the the outcome 
but yeah, nonetheless, that seemed to be more detrimental to his own team than helping I, anything. So. I think so too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I think M was his button and I think it was the comma that uh, was bound to uh, gravity. And he had been the one in the server to change the config and everything. So he had Archon already loaded in. Yeah. Yeah. So just uh, kind of a, a little bit of a uh, stars aligning moment. Because uh, normally he wouldn't have had Archon password put in. He wouldn't be playing yeah. demo. Yeah, so just yeah. a little funny moment there. Haven't have never seen that before in a match. My favorite part of this is watching this scout jump in and thinking he's going to jump on the fly. <laughs> yeah, because like, you think that you're just like, <laughs> like what I'm watching the, the cast. What the fuck? I'm watching the cast and I see you up there near that like mosaic thing. And I'm thinking like, I didn't know you could stand on that ledge up there. And then sure enough, the, the scout just kind of floats into view. <laughs> Trying to strafe down is what he's trying to do <laughs> as he's doing serpentine on the roof. Uh, exhale, yeah. exhale, drop. <laughs> okay, that it's was like a good one. Getting chocolate factory. So is it time to show off the the community sentiments for the round one uh, of the playoff predictions? Yes, I believe so. Okay, let's hit it up. Um, let's start, let, let's finish with our matchup tonight. So I'll go from right to left, starting with always be NWO, pulling mm -hmm. that up now. Okay, uh, sorry, NWO. This, uh, wow, one new, person according Coco. to the community, yeah. <laughs> this new world ain't going to belong to you. So All three of us have exactly the same result. Wow. One of my favorite things about this data and the way repair shown to sh uh, chose to show it this is all him he did all this um is the way that every single every, every single uh matchup is a bell curve every single one it's it's so st statistically beautiful so yeah, so not a lot of faith in, in nwo there <laughs> yeah uh let's see the standouts uh coca is the only person voting for for nwo so coca getting some money on the side there to make up for the fact that he won't be winning the gift card. Or have ba show Bacon Man vo voting against his own team and he doesn't want to show it. <laughs> oh, we're going to show yeah. it, Bacon Man. Yeah, here it is. Okay, TNSP Auto, the other uh, next matchup. So this is a little more evenly um, considered by the community. Um, I'm starting to get server info, so we got to bop through this quick. Yeah. Standouts being Bacon Man voting against his team. That's a good one. <laughs> I think that Repair, been a mistake. You, have, uh, you have TNS winning by a lot. I do. Yeah, I, I for, for my thought on on this for this week was the the team the, the the close matchups I put ten to thirty, and then the not close matchups I put forty to sixty. Mm -hmm. We'll see what actually happens. But yeah, a lot of people agreed with me here. Looks like, and Doug, well, where's Doug? I'm on the right auto. Oh shit! All right. And let's look at thanks be COVID. This, yes, is, this is the, the most, most even prediction even, of the week. Yeah. 100%. With most votes for thanks, but COVID doing pretty, pretty dang well too. So this is the matchup that's happening on, is this tomorrow night's matchup? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So tomorrow night on Coach Suze's stream, definitely make sure to tune in for this one. It should be a good one. And uh, did you land repairman? You're on, oh, you're in the close to COVID side. Got it. And uh, let's pivot to tonight's prediction. Ooh. So the community really thinks Hello is going to win this. So Hello can really, really shake things up by uh, throwing Bat <laughs> a bone. Wow, Bat. <laughs> Look at this guy. An ally of the free agents. What, a, what an idiot. Let's throw it out to the just free agents. Kidding, just kidding. That, 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 that is a great idea. And uh, it's actually time for us to jump in and cast this match. So let's go. Yeah. All right. Form is turned off. So if you missed it, sucks to suck. Are you uh, private messaging the pass? Hang on. Uh, you guys can kill your webcams if you want. I won't be using them for the cast. Neon just sent me a DM. Okay. It's in the it's in the uh 
text chat. Got it. I am entering the server. 